May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my refuge. Amen. So the text for the Christmas sermon today comes from John's Gospel. And I especially want to pick up verses 1 and 2, which read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So for our text, please be seated. First, a Merry Christmas to each and every one of you, and I pray that God fills you with his Christmas hope, his Christmas peace, his Christmas joy, and his Christmas love, not just today, but every day. Feels a bit different here today, though, doesn't it, compared to yesterday? Christmas Day and Christmas Eve have different feelings to them. Christmas Eve comes in a flurry of excitement and takes the manger and shows us the manger and it's filled with anticipation, it's filled with celebration. But Christmas Day, things slow down a bit. There's only one service on Christmas Day. There were five yesterday. Christmas Day is, as I would say, one of those be still and know that I am God kind of days. And the gospel readings today and yesterday reflect those differences. Christmas Eve gospel from Luke is full of shepherds and angels and all the events of that first Christmas in Bethlehem. Today's Christmas Day gospel from John strips everything else away and focuses solely on Jesus, the Word. Luke tells the Christmas story with many facts. John tells it with poetry. Luke tells it from looking from the outside. John tells it from looking in the inside. Luke tells of what happened. John wants us to reflect on what it means. Luke describes an event. John describes an incarnation. Luke tells a story of particulars he uses in those days and in the region. It's about a particular place, a particular time, and a particular people. John describes a cosmic, holy event pointing to the light and pointing to creation. They both are the gospel of our Lord, but they both tell us very different things about that Lord, about Jesus Christ, about that Word made flesh. John points us to creation and to the beginning, and that's where I really want us to focus today. Last Saturday, or Sunday, I asked us to look, to try to see Jesus in the small, unclear, quiet events of each and every day. Today, I want us to focus on the crystal clear, revealed Word of God. The Word he gives for us to ponder. The Word he gives as he speaks to us daily. The Word he gives to let us know about our Savior. We all are baptized children of God. We are all servants of the Word. I want to encourage you to make a new beginning this Christmas season. And if you haven't, spend some time each and every day in God's Word, learning from our Heavenly Father about Christ, our Savior, who is made flesh. It's a living Word. You will constantly learn new things about your Savior. I know that I do. John is bold as he starts his gospel. He echoes the beginning of Scripture. He echoes Moses' writing in Genesis, in the beginning. I imagine that all the Jews that read that gospel were immediately taken to Genesis. And on this Christmas morning, I want us to go there too. I want us to go to the beginning. I want us to look at Jesus in everyday events, as I mentioned last week, but today I want us to look for Jesus in every word of Scripture. 
In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, God created. John takes us to the beginning, Genesis. In the beginning. I know I've said it a lot, but I want to focus in on that. And I have to give credit to this, to Chad Bird, in a podcast that I listen to, and I know some of you do, so this may not be new to you, but for those of you who don't listen to that, I encourage you to. 40 minutes in the Old Testament. You truly see Jesus Christ in almost every word of Scripture. So in the beginning, as Chad had taught me, there are three words to us, but in Hebrew it is a single word, bereshit. Bereshit. It is the start of everything. But you can also see Jesus Christ in that very first word of Scripture. John is pointing us in the Gospel today as he draws the connection to the incarnation of Jesus Christ to the creation of the world. But there's another connection that's less obvious. There's a connection if you look at Genesis in the beginning and compare it to the book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs, which is a book of wisdom. Wisdom is not a thing, it's a person. My confirmation verse, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. Chapter 8 in Proverbs states, as wisdom literally speaks to us, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. Wisdom in Proverbs is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, as we learned in Proverbs, was at the beginning Bereshit, in the beginning, in the very first word of Scripture, you see Jesus Christ. You can find him throughout Scripture. Everything points to Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Everything points to the beginning. Everything points to the Alpha and the Omega. My prayer this Christmas Day is this, that you do look for Jesus Christ in the small events, the unclear events of each and every day, but I also ask that you, maybe in the beginning of each day, search for him in his word where he is crystal clear revealed to us. He was in the beginning, and the beginning was with him. As we sing later today after we receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the words of the Nunc Dimittis, the words that Simeon said when he literally saw the Savior of the world, words first stated upon the seeing of Jesus Christ, O Lord, now let your servant depart in heavenly peace. For I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace, a light to lead the Gentiles until your holy hill, the glory of your people, your chosen Israel. All glory to the Father, all glory to the Son, all glory to the Spirit forever, three in one. For as in the beginning is now and shall be forever, God's triune name resounding through all eternity. Keep your eyes open and see Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Please rise. And together, let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 